Okay, guys, uh, we're gonna demonstrate long line work. Long line has been around since the 70s. It's based on Keeler method of training, uh, which was done on choke chains. We're, we don't use choke chains in our training. We're using a training collar, uh, a three millimeter training collar because Polly is over, uh, she's around 50 pounds. And so she's a bigger dog. Um, she has comfort tips on uh, and also um, this is after a dog has been conditioned to the training collar indoors before we come outside. Um, I'll also demonstrate it um, on, on a uh, long line with a slip lead that's built in, uh, but, but a biothane leash. So this is a short version of the leash, and then we're gonna switch this out because this would be uh, for a structured walk if you're walking a dog on a structured walk with a training collar. But we're gonna take off the short leash, and we're going to uh, put on a long line. Now, um, again, all this stuff will be available on, um, on our online store. You can buy these online on Amazon. You can buy them on training uh, websites. And again, some of this stuff will be available through our website. But a 15 foot is what we recommend. Um, longer than that, um, the dog will get tangled or you will get tangled and it will be too far. So a 15 foot line is what we recommend. Um, and then she does have a, a carabiner on here for safety. And so we'll talk about all that and why it is important. Um, if you need to put a piece of tape or another carabiner here, if you're taking a dog out to the park, um, you know, uh, if your dog has ever run away or if you're dealing with um, dog aggression issues, any human aggression issues, it's important to have on safety. Um, you know, if you don't get uh, the, care, uh, the uh, training collar um, on properly, it will give you a backup safety here. So, so, Basically, after the dog has been taught leash pressure, that is why we can move to giving the dog more freedom um, on a longer line. So they've been taught leash pressure on a short leash. Polly knows how to turn off the pressure of this leash. She knows how to turn off the pressure of the training collar. So I'm gonna give her 15 foot of freedom. It's like when God gives us more freedom to see what kind of decisions we're gonna make. Um, and so we can move the line out of the way here. And I'm just going to start walking. I'm going to pick a point and I'm going to walk to that point. I hope that Polly is going to respond to the pressure that the caller is giving her to follow me. It says, follow me and you're going to find peace. When she's following me, there's going to be no pressure on the line. And I'm going to be walking to a point. If she checks out and goes in another direction, then that's my cue to turn. Okay, I don't have to turn, uh, you know, 180 degrees. I can turn 90 degrees. I can, you know, make a slight turn you're going to see. And when she's following me, then I'm going to uh, pet her and let her know she's in the right position and there's gonna be no pressure on the line. So the biggest thing is you wanna drop the leash and you wanna let go with your left hand. Everybody, what they do is they tend to hold the line. They wanna wrap all the line in your hand. You really, now is your time to let go. You wanna do this in a controlled setting. You can do this at a, uh, a baseball field. You can do this in an open field, just a setting when there's not a lot of uh, uh, traffic. Okay, to start with, not a lot of distractions. You add distractions later, we'll add that on uh, another video. Um, and the biggest, another uh, big thing is, is don't step on the line. Because if you step on the line, you're gonna accidentally give your dog a big correction on that training collar. And so you really wanna be careful with that. Okay, so I'm gonna drop the leash. Um, I'm gonna, I put my hand through the handle here and I grab a hold of the leash here. Okay, I put it to my chest and my other hand is available for pets, okay? And if I need to grab the leash, but we're gonna start walking. And Polly has done this a few times. We recommend that dogs do it about six times before they get the hang of it. She hasn't, she's probably done it maybe about six times. So she's still new at this. So Polly is going kind of in her own direction here and I'm gonna make a slight turn to the right and I can say, Polly, come. Good girl, and now she's caught up to me, and I can pet her. Good girl, when she's in the right spot. And now she's starting to follow. Good girl. Good girl. And when she's following along, there's no pressure on the line. I'm petting her, and it's wonderful. You're just you know walking and experiencing the world together. This gives dogs opportunity to hunt, sniff, explore, be dog, you gotta keep your eye on the dog in case they have to use the bathroom so that you don't give them a correction. So I'm always looking over my shoulder at where the dog is. But she, her job is to focus and follow me because if she's focused on me, then she's not worried about other things in the world. So I'm gonna say, Polly, come and apply gentle pressure. 
And here she goes. Polly, come. Polly, come. Polly, come. Good girl, come on. Good girl, Polly, come. Hey, Polly, come. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Polly, come. A lot of dogs itch. Uh, itch with the new metal on their collar. Polly, come. Polly, come. Come. Okay, just be careful not to get tangled on the line. If the dog gets tangled, so I want to slower, you want to slower down, rein in the line, and just adjust the collar. Okay? Polly, come. I'm giving her a little bit of leash pressure here. Good girl. Good girl. Grab the collar up by, uh, grab the leash up by her collar if she gets tangled. Polly, come. Polly, come. She's really not following me <laughs> at that. Great, she's focused on a lot of other distractions in the world. So I am reining in the leash so that I can give her a lot more direction. Polly, come. So I'm actually reining in the leash right now so that um, I can give her more direction about where she's to be going. But she's more focused on the camera um, and the other people here than following me. Polly, come. Polly, come. Polly, come. She gets a little bit ahead. Just give a little tap. I want her to come in the same direction. Good girl. She's stopping, you know, a little bit further back than what I would like. Polly, come. But dogs should have a break. Polly, sit. Dogs should have a break um, in between these exercises um, to process what you're doing. And so everything that we learned inside, Polly down. You can use your foot for this or you can use your hand, but just asking her to lay down and, and transfer everything that we did indoors outside so that your dog can relax and just process, you know, what we just did. She's going to, you know, try to eat some grass here and... Um, but basically, you're just asking them to, to chill out and process, you know, uh, the exercise that you just did. Meditate on that and, and learn some things. So you can do this in between uh, your long line sessions. Dogs should do this about six times before they really start to get it. And so she's new at this, um, but that was the point of using her to demonstrate it so that you could see how a new dog uh, might struggle as opposed to um, an older dog who's done this many times. So now I'm gonna demonstrate long line. Um, and as we move through each exercise, we can be layering on different tools. And so Barry's done this exercise, you know, Barry's 11 years old, so he's done it many times. And so you can use um, a long line with a slip lead built in. And again, you know, I'll have links for all of this for you guys to be able to buy this equipment. Um, but this is just, um, it's easier um, to slip on and off the dogs. Um, it's less pressure than a training collar. So uh, you may be able to move to that later on in your training. Um, I won't get into demonstrating the e-collar, but we have other um, tools that we can layer on later. So I'm just gonna demonstrate the long line uh, with Barry um, so that you can see uh, how it should look um, with a dog that's done this many times. So I'm gonna let the line out. I put my hand through the handle. Barry, come. Barry, come. Barry, come. Good boy. Good boy. Barry, come. Bear, come. Good boy. 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 Bear, come. Good job, buddy. Bear, come. Oh, he might have to pee here. So I'm going to give him a break. So I'm keeping an eye over my shoulder. Again, to make sure if the dog's got to go to the bathroom, I don't just keep pulling him through that and correcting him. So stop and let him go to the bathroom if they need to. And then, bear, come. Then you'll pick right up. Good job, Barry. Good job, Barry. Good job, Barry. So you give them pets. Bear, come. Good job, Bear. 
So really the goal is just for you guys to be walking in the same direction, allowing your dog to hunt, sniff, explore. Uh, Barry, come. You can rein in the leash, you know, um, if you need to. Um, Bear, come here. And so, um, Bear, come. You know, but the goal is to just keep them um, uh, tuned in. Good boy, Bear. Um, tuned in and just, but it allows them a little more freedom. So it allows them 15 feet to hunt, sniff, explore the world because that's what dogs are designed for. And, but it still asks them to follow you. So basically, um, you know, you, God gives us more opportunity. He gives us choices, free will, you know, but the pressure on the leash gives them a, a little direction and pressure to tell them, you know, what is expected of them. They still need to follow us because if they're off making their own decisions and checking out and not listening to you at all out in the world, it's just, it's really not great for them or you. So, um, Basically, this just gives them more freedom and it increases uh, pack drive, social drive. Um, there, you want to sit? Good job, buddy. You lay down. Good job, Bear. And so, um, you know, you can just rest in between the sessions um, and allow your dogs to uh, process and meditate about what you've just done. So, uh, Bear's going to lay down. While we were filming Structured Fetch, um, there was a bird that landed in the yard. He's just hanging around here and Polly is really fixated on it. So if your dog gets fixated on something else, when you're doing long line on a, a long line with a slip lead built in, or you're doing an exercise, you're doing Structured Fetch, you can take the slip lead if they're trained on transitional leash, um, just like we did, I'm holding onto her collar, and you're gonna grow a beard and you can go right over their nose with the long line. So now you've got um, a head halter built in the transitional leash to the long line and now you're in a safe position to be able to guide your dog away from something that they're distracted on. Polly come. Polly come. Polly stop. Sit. Polly, come. So, Polly, sit. She's really distracted about that. But so this is, again, a good uh, time that you can see when you put pressure on the dog um, to get them to, you know, to let go of something, to stop focusing. But it's also for safety purposes to be able to have control of your dog in a setting like that when, you know, if they get overly fixated or uh, stimulated about something.